Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the tiny cupboard! Yeah! Hello! Nice! Welcome! That's what I had to say about that. I have a donation-based snack bar over there. This is a community theater, so we are pretty much donation-driven. We try to keep the prices really low. Very nice. I, I Welcome to the kind of tiny cupboard once again. Put your hands together for a stoner morning show! Thank you. Hey. Holy shit, a new haircut just walked into the room. Holy Woo! shit. Is, Jared, did you get your haircut? Oh, I got it. It looks great. I yeah, all right. F- uh, first guest just walked into the room, and anyway, we'll talk about that haircut later. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm, I'm Ralph. This is Sean. Yeah. All right, let's start. Okay, that, good work, everybody. Right? We can, yeah, give yourselves. Yeah, this is it. You yeah. guys have done great so yeah. far. That's right. Um, friendly audience right off the bat. Good job. A lot of polite claps, a lot of nods. Yep. Yeah. You guys are doing really good. Everyone's uh, real polite. Yeah. Not enough compliments to the audience ever for any show, but we do it like too much. Yeah. I like what's going on over here. What's the air on that side? A lot of puffy coats. Yeah. Some hats, some not hats. Yeah. This side of the room, get ready for me like going like this a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just looking for looking for laughter. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or if somebody says something shocking, just like checking over this side of the yeah. room. Yeah. No need to be like a hip New York audience that like was weighing the laughter. If you feel like we need some laughs, just give them to us. That's right. Just give it. Also, yeah. Also, if anything needs to be said at any point in the time, don't wait for the end. Like, raise your hand and declare anything that needs to be said. Yeah. Right? We'll miss things. Yes, we'll absolutely. miss things up here. Yes, Anya. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I decided to put on a sweater because it's cold, and I was like, I don't have enough. Well, you know this about you as well. You are trying to dress flashier, Col- more colorful, more colorful. Flashy yeah, is stuff is tough for me. I don't no, like flashy. Yeah. I feel yeah. like I'm Shamar Moore. <laughs> Right. Uh, but yeah, I, I, more colors. From SWAT? Is he in SWAT? I guess he is in SWAT. I think so. I feel bad From now because I picked on int- Shamar Moore. From Criminal Intent, right? He, he's in a lot of things. Yeah. I feel like he was probably in an arabesque film. Anybody remember those from BT? No. The arabesque films? Yeah. I know the dance move arabesque. What? It's a, yeah, it's a, from ballet. Anyone Can, do ballet here? Okay. Do you anyway. know what the move looks like? Could you do it? No, no. Damn. I know that th- I know there's feet positions in ballet. I know One them. And two and three and four. First whatever. position, second position. Yeah, I know of that. Um. Anyway. Uh, okay. This is the Happy show. The this end. is what this the show is. is. <laughs> yeah. This is this is the show, and. Um, I, I don't know. Does anybody is anybody floored by what's happening? Anybody startled or upset? Okay. Raise your hand and say, I don't know. Give, somebody give an observation. What are you feeling? What's going on? Yeah, it, within Let's, you, what's happening on stage? Share anything. Anything you got. No, that was that was this, a hand raise. That was just there a was that there was, was, was a, a moment stick. of hope oh, yeah. where it seemed like somebody was like, "I'll participate," and this man is simply raising a drink to his yeah. lips. I feel like we should have oh somebody. I like when somebody points out that things are nice in a very aristocratic way because it makes it seem even more very nice. Yeah, yeah. This pineapple juice, excellent. Yeah, great. <laughs> I was. That's the way things should be appreciated. I that's love right. That. I think that. Before um, Ellie, future guest, middle guest on this show, yes. Um, before she spoke up, I I thought maybe when people come in and check in with uh, Anya at the door, maybe Anya should tell them there's going to be audience interaction in this show mm. because I feel like sometimes when it happens, people are like shocked by it. I respect that as yeah, yeah. I want, I want to know truly when you walk into a show. As, a, as an audience person, when you walk into a show and the, and the people on stage begin to speak to those in the audience, how, how do you feel inside? Right. Oh, thumbs, thumbs up. up. There's yeah. a thumbs up. Anybody else? Thumbs up from Leah, who I'm 
sharing some information that maybe she wasn't ready to be shared, but she had her first Pop-Tart today. I wow. Know. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you might have asked first before you shared that, but it's out now. I love that everybody automatically applauded. That's... That was fun. Yeah, what flavor? What flavor? Uh, strawberry. Strawberry. Yeah. yeah. It's funny... She looked back at Anya, who ma- who is in charge of the donation-based sn- snack bar. She looked back at Anya for both jokes, or b- both questions. Flavor? I don't know. Frosted? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. To be honest, I don't know what any flavor of Pop-Tarts, t- Pop-Tart tastes like. Pop-Tarts just taste like Ooh. Pop-Tarts. You know? Uh, yeah, like- I think you, I, dying. I think you need to use that mic. I think this is a two mic show. So yeah, everybody, it's, a, it's a two mic show. Guys. Get rid of that thing, and uh, I'm gonna toss this one away. That's right, like a grenade. Okay. All right. Um, Pop tarts. Yeah. Good job. All right. We're we on something? I don't. We haven't really started yet. No. no. This yeah, is yeah. still preamble. preamble. Right. We're gonna get into the actual show at okay. some point. Would you have actual show stuff? What the? Oh, it happened again. Um, do I have? Uh, we have see. three guests coming up. Get get excited for that. Three guests. Get pumped for that. Get, get pumped. 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 Come on, come on, come yeah. on. Come on, come on. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, let me see. I. Oh, this is something I want to do. Yeah. Earlier today, I was trying to think about bits to write for the show, and I was panicking because oh. I wasn't. I couldn't, nothing was coming to mind. Oh. And I'd forgotten my own rule, which is to not stress out about ideas, that ideas are abundant. So this is what I want to do. I agree. Somebody who's got, who's has their phone handy right now, pull it out. Mm-hmm. Who's got their phone handy right now, pull it out. Pop-Tart I need Leah. you. Pop-Tart Leah has her phone. Pop-Tart Leah. Yeah. All right. I, go to your timer. Set it for one minute. In one minute, I'm gonna come up with ten ideas. Oh, okay. Sweet. And I need somebody else who's honest. I need if you're honest, raise your hand. Somebody who's honest. This gentleman. Okay. I want you to make sure that I'm not phoning it in. The ideas don't have to be good. You just have to judge whether or not I'm really trying to come up with ideas. Okay. They don't have to be good. You don't have to judge the goodness or the badness. Just whether or not I'm really trying. Does he judge each idea or at the end? At the end, you say, hey, man, you were fucking around, okay? All right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay. All right. So you say go yeah, when you, you're ready. You tell me when. Ralph will give 10 ideas, and then this gentleman will, at the end, give a number of how many ideas he thought you were, yeah. are, are legit ideas. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, okay Br- Bronson, Bronson Pinchot. Pinchot. I'm going to try to find a nut and name it the Pinchot. Okay, Bronson Pinchot was on the show Perfect Strangers. I want to do an overdub of a, of the ep- of an episode of Perfect Strangers and 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 uh, with my own voices. I want to have a deck of cards and paint it, put the face any of the faces like queens and jacks. I'm going to put my mom's face on each of them. Um, uh, the, the hammer dance. I want to do the hammer dance up and down my street in a circle. I'm going to go all the way around. Um, I want to do um, uh, I want to do ten push ups on my birthday every year. Um, I, I want to... Um, uh, every time I see fireworks, I'm going to blow a kiss at one of them. Um, uh, I want to uh, tie all my shoelaces together or just tie a bunch of shoelaces together and make a jump rope. Um, I want to watch the movie Rocky on a treadmill. All five of them just walking on a treadmill the whole time. Um, uh, Burgess Meredith. Uh, Burgess Meredith, I want to I want to dress as Mickey, but not on Halloween. Just when I need motivation for myself. Um, all right, how, there we go. Was that Tim? I yeah. Uh, Nobody I, counted how many ideas I wasn't it was. Counting, I don't know. How, how was it? Eight, eight ideas. Eight. Okay. And then how many of those were good? Eight. Be honest. Okay. <laughs> all right. I was wow. phoning it in. All right, we're gonna at some point later in the show. I'm gonna do another round of this. And I'm gonna try harder. Okay. I'm gonna try. You got me. All right. All right. That sounds like a fun challenge. I might want to do it sometime, but not today. This is for you. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Here's something that I want to talk about. I come up with a lot of I- why- wacky ideas. I feel like sometimes I share them on this show, and I came up with an idea that I want to share with everyone. Okay. All right. Good. I came up with a a pizza restaurant idea. All right. And it's called Found Pizza. 
All right? And so when you go in, you order a pizza. They'll, when, when they, when you order the pizza, they'll be like, I don't know, I'll see what I can do. And then they open a window and yell out the pizza that you ordered. They just yell it. All right? And then like in 10 minutes, obviously they're back there making it. But then somebody who comes out and is just like, I found this pepperoni pizza. Wow. And then, and then they give it to you and they're like, Hey, we found one. And then if people, this is the brilliant part of the idea is okay. when people complain, it when like, I didn't really like this pizza or you screwed up. They'll be like, all right, we'll find you another one. And then they just find another, find one quotes. They make it and then they just give you that one. Wow. What, is, what does everyone think? You, oh, the, Said he'd love one it. for one. Yeah. Mr. Three out of ten over here. Yeah. And then one for one. Found the hell? pizza. You're a master at well, this. Well, I mean, I cheated because I've been thinking about this for like two weeks. <laughs> Refining it. Well, Found pizza. That I think that's a beautiful idea. Okay. I like the opportunity to dream. And and then when you call in to order delivery, they'll be like, Alright, we'll see what we can do. Wow. What's your address? And then, of course, they'll show up. And then the guy who show, delivers your pizza is like, we found these pizzas. <laughs> I want to do a documentary where I just tape the faces of people dreaming about where their pizza is going to come yeah, from. Yeah, I heard some comments over here. We're, we're, thumbs up or thumbs down? Okay. I feel like I put you on the spot. I don't know if that's very honest. Okay. But who hates it? <laughs> All right. I think I think I know a way to prove it to you and to everyone else in the room. Yeah. Say what you're gonna say. Say. No. <laughs> they make it. It's a fun thing. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. Here's you can you can order that though. Maybe we'll put a random pizza on the end. Like you can order a random pizza, and then like, hey, we found a random one. Wow! I'm gonna. I think I can prove it. Okay. I think I can make you a believer. Here's right. what's gonna happen. What's your name right there? Ha- Andrew. Yeah. Okay, I'm Ralph. Nice to meet you. Thank you for coming. Here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna help me. Okay. Um, put in an order for like a pepperoni or cheese pizza, whatever it is, or another pizza, or don't, another don't, pizza, don't, whatever don't, you want. Don't let him tell you what pizza or order. Okay. Yeah. And, Okay. okay, I'm an, okay. I'll see what I can do now. We'll, we're gonna do that again in a second. Then you just don't do anything. You don't do anything. Everyone else, look at Andrew's face and just just look at his face and imagine he's dreaming about what pizza he's gonna get. Okay, you don't do anything. Don't do anything. All right. Okay, just go ahead and give me that order again. All right, I'll see what I can do. Now I'm lost. What are we doing? <laughs> hey, I found you a pizza. Oh. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I get what we're doing now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is yeah. it better? Do you like? Huh? Okay, good. Good. Yeah. All right. We should go, we should do a guest because I feel like we're behind schedule. All right. Um, give it up for our friend Jared Wilder, everybody. Yeah, come on, Jared. Jared, you're gonna have to sit here and we're gonna have to share a microphone with you because as you heard, I think one of our microphones isn't working. Yeah, this one's wonky already. Yeah, yeah. You look great, by the way. Where'd you get this haircut? All right. Oh, I got it, um, uh, in, uh, Hell's Kitchen. Oh, hello. Yeah. 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 Cool. All right. Like, I, I took his hand as if, uh, I needed the entirety of you to make this comment. Yeah. And the microphone's there. It's That's not- fine. That's whatever makes you comfortable. Yeah. yeah. If it know. makes you comfortable to make me uncomfortable, go for it. <laughs> no, honestly, I think the opposite. I feel like the more comfortable you are, the happier I wind up being. Wow. It's who's smoking? It does smell. Oh, okay, cool. All right. <laughs> give it up. Give it up for Dream Treats NYC, everybody. Woo! Yeah. Like, it's so funny uh, that like people have smoked in here before, but I was like shocked. I was like, "What's going on in this establishment?" Yeah, right. <laughs> but it's a good way to act. 
in some ways. Just to be shocked? Yeah. Just to pretend, yeah, pretend shocked. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I appreciate the fact that it, uh, it always does because it makes me also feel a lot better about the fact that I usually smell like weed, so it's not just me. I'm, I feel like I never smell like weed. I don't know. Yeah, actually, you're right. You don't. Cool. All right. Interesting. I grew up with my my uncles and people in my family always smelling like weed, and I didn't know what weed was. And I yeah. Was like, ah, I was just like, this smell is around a lot. Yeah. I. You know what? I had friends who I was like, when I was growing up, I had friends whose houses I'd go over, and I was like, these people use dryer sheets. Oh, yeah. Like, my family doesn't use dryer sheets, but these people use dryer sheets. I could tell. Because of the right, smell? Walking right into the house, you could tell. Yeah. I could. Yeah. Wow. It's, like, you know, it's, it's, the, um, it's the old line from Half-Baked, like, either somebody's having a party or somebody needs to do their shirt laundry. Oh, yeah. oh because it smells like B.O.? I'm lost. No, like, I could tell that their laundry smelled like dryer sheets. So it's a pizza idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But I was also that weird kid that would walk into a kid's, like, a new friend's house and, like, oh, you, your mom used, must use dryer sheets. And then the, the kid, he, he would be like, I think so. In the house? But I was, like, the weird kid that would point out that your mom used dryer sheets. What, what kind of things did you notice when you went to friends' houses? As a, were you, first of all, are you of a culture where just going to a friend's house is not a big deal? Or did it, like... Was it like a big deal if you got to go to a friend's house and hang out? Well, that's a really good question, actually. Um, I'd say I feel like walking in, I probably didn't notice like the smells as much as I would notice things like, I mean, them like, oh, they have Nintendo. That's awesome. Like, way to go. Yeah. However, though, I always assumed like when I walked in, if it smelled like dryer sheets, I'd be like, oh, they clean their house. Way to go. Like, I was just, like, assumed, or like, oh, yeah, well, they had to, it was, it was house cleaning day. Yeah. I've got a funny kid story about me. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, when I was, like, in kindergarten, I slept over a kid's house, and I flooded the toilet just by, by flushing it. I didn't do uh, anything bad. Uh, but the kids were, but the family was just like, oh, that happens a lot. Sorry, our, our <laughs> toilet floods. So for, like, the next four years, whenever I would sleep over a friend's house, I would be afraid to use the bathroom in the middle of the night in case I f just flushed the toilet and it flooded. Or I would, like, ask my mom before I... W or the the friend's mom before I went to bed. I was like, does your toilet flood <laughs> if I flush it? <laughs> Such a great life. And then the mom would have to be, no. <laughs> anyway. You know, this also... Because I grew up in Manhattan, so, like, I feel like it wasn't going to different, like... Houses, it was uh, like apartments within the like area. So like if it was somebody in the building, yeah, I could go over there. But honestly, your story is going to give me nightmares tonight about like flooding my own bathroom. And I live alone. Yeah. <laughs> when, all right, you grew up in Manhattan. When you went to another building with a doorman, would you check in or would you just walk right by? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Always check in. No, I feel like that. Yeah. It was like, oh, yeah. Cause it's like the, it's like the medallion with taxi drivers. Like there's a code. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? And like they're part of us and, you know, old Rhapsody Blue. Yeah. But you're a kid. I bet you could have just walked into any building though, right? Yeah. I feel like though it, I mean, I guess, yeah, it was like the 80s and 90s. It was kind of like, that's how Home Alone happened. You know what I mean? Like how he can check in. Because it's like, oh, yeah, he's a kid. Sure, why wouldn't you be able to just check into the palace? You know what I mean? Uh, I don't know. This this might be... I hope this is not a, 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 any in any way uh, presumptuous. But I sort of feel like even as a young child, you went to the doorman and gave your last name. Wilder. <laughs> That's such a phenomenal comment. I, I feel like, yeah, um, I don't know if I was as formal as a child, um, but no, I probably would be, yes. I, re I remember, like, my mom would always be like, yes, it's Mrs. Wilder. I'm like, oh, my, you have a first name. They don't know, and I didn't because she was just mom to me, but but you're right, though. That's hilarious. I, I don't feel bad. When I was born, there was a Mater D. <laughs> In the hospital? Yes, yeah, and they uh, dabbed me with a kerchief. Oh. And I table. Oh. We got, we got mic, mic trouble up We got here. mic issues. Yeah. If, you're not, if you didn't hear, I just made a really funny joke, and the mic dropped it. Yeah. Did you guys so. hear this? 
Uh, it won't be as good the, ne- the second time. Yeah, tell it later. Okay, I will. Yeah, yeah. I will. The mic drop. The mic is dropping me. Uh, all right, what did you ask for for in, for this haircut? Oh, uh, I basically what happened was that I had like a re- I had like a ridiculous Jufro that was just kind of out of control, and at some point I was like, hey, just I literally have gone to this guy for so long that I just sit down, and he just starts cutting my hair. Yeah, which is really nice to have. Uh, and like. I, f- I feel like the one time or one or two times that I didn't, it wound up being just rough. And I don't even know. It's not even like you can do anything with it, like with my hair. I mean, it was just like I pretty much just like at, at one point, I feel like last week, I feel like the last time I saw you, it was just so out of control that I was just kind of like, it kind of looked what I assume like, like Darth Vader, like taking off his helmet. And it was just that helmet hair. You know what I mean? We were just like, all right, I hope, I hope this is going well, but. Who the fuck knows? I was just praying, like it didn't just go into different sides and started to attack people. It was like it's like a little shop of horror situation. I have to say I can't relate to this at all. <laughs> I I understand I understand. I've never I don't think I've ever worried about my my hair in my life. Yeah. As you can see. I never have. Well, I'm bald under here, so it's like I haven't been to a barber in like Decades. Damn. Yeah. When a man can't go to a barber anymore, it's. I know. You lose I've, a piece. I've gone to a barber to get my beard trimmed, and for that, I'm never. I also never give instructions. I'm like, look, it's just insane. Just like make it, <laughs> make it better. It yeah, make it better. Uh, because it's funny because that feels like very much the idea of of like, yes, this is like make me look like this ad. You know, like make me look like they did in the pictures. Oh, yeah. And they literally can't do anything. He was just like, it was just started cutting, and then it was done. He was like, "All right, well, good to see you." You would you remind me of your haircut looks a little bit like? Do you remember that moment, like right? I think right around two thousand, where George Clooney got the Caesar. Anybody remember this? He had the Caesar cut. No. And, I, and he had it's like a, it's like e, kind of even all the way around. Yeah. And and lined up, and I was like, dude. I thought only black people got the Caesar. <laughs> and I was like, holy shit, dude. Clooney, whoa, shit, man. Wow. And you're still talking about I'm it. I'm still talking about it. I think it was right around when he did a movie with Ice Cube, too. And I was like, damn, George. Okay. Hmm. You remember that? You guys remember that? No. No, nobody does. Nobody does. Well, we'll Google it after. Google George Google Clinton. It. There's a little salt and peppery, too. Like yeah. There's a little, little dash of it. Uh, I want to ask the gentleman that rated Ralph's ideas. What do you give this haircut? Uh, one, to, one out of ten. A ten? Yo. Wow. Oh, right, right, right. Oh, oh turn. Oh. He said turn. We celebrated. Yeah. Wow. Wow. An 8.5. Wow. wow. Good job. What? I love how I'm just taking credit for somebody else's work now. Yeah. You, what's the intersection of this hair, Barbara? You should. Oh, yeah, it's on, uh, it's Art of Fades on uh, 47th and 10th. First few years in New York, I didn't know how to navigate, really. Like, I knew my. Uh, this thing is dying. Yeah. It's me. Oh, you're stepping on the cord. That's bad for microphone cords. Oh, Step shit. Maybe yeah. that'll... Okay. Yeah, it is. So I'm in the city, <laughs> and I'm like, I need a haircut. I think I, I think I had something to do that night. So I go to this random barber in the middle of the city. Like, this is like financial district or midtown, something middle like that. Middle of the city. He's not even in a building. Yeah. No, it's, yeah. Like, it's like a small, like, shop under a building or something. Yeah, yeah. I walk in. And I get my hair cut. This place didn't have... I'm sorry for embellishing your story. It's okay. This place didn't have steps that went up. It had steps that went down. Exactly. Yeah. It went down into... And my first mistake was I was impatient. I knew I had to get a haircut. And you don't... You really... Black, maybe Puerto Rican. As a black dude, you don't fuck around too much. You got to, you know what I mean? You got limited options. Yeah. I went to this dude. He was a Middle Eastern dude. And in New York, it's kind of hard to, you're just like, okay, I guess this works. I went and I got the haircut. It was fine. 
Forty dollars. Wow! And I was just like, and, and we're talking what what year money? This is like two thousand nine or ten. That's, oh, well, that's kind of close to now. Yeah. Not for me. Yeah, yeah. For me, that was everything. That was my rent. <laughs> Uh, I just remember what, and then, and I had already gotten the haircut. I couldn't opt out of it. Yeah. I couldn't be like, put it back. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah, he cleaned me out. Was it good though? Was the haircut good? No. Oh. No. Yeah. It wasn't bad. It just was. Yeah. It just was. Yeah. All right. What else is up with you? Uh, chilling. I, I, uh, I, uh, Managed to get a fly out of my apartment that was there the entire weekend, so I feel really accomplished. Wow. Weekend? What was the what was the method? Like legitimately the entire weekend. You know when you're like, all right, life is breaking me. You know, and I've been feeling that a lot more, um, uh, probably most of my life actually. But like, so so in particular, I was like, I was like, hey, like I started rationalizing with it, like talking, like hey. Dude, I gotta go. Like, you know, I left basically, like, I took, like, I opened up all the, like, the, I opened, like, one window. Then I opened, like, my door. Then I opened multiple doors to try to get, like, cross breeze going on. Like, I thought. And it was cold this weekend, and you had a cold. And, and I was like, oh, and then I was like, well, you know what? It just kept on going, kept on going. And I was like, what? you don't, like, I guess this fly just lives with me now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I have a roommate. It's this fly. Yeah. yeah. And, um, it, it was it was crazy. If it would have gotten rid of the fly and not damaged any of your belongings, would you have ridden a small pony and worn a suit of armor and had a lance to battle with the fly to get it out? Honestly, in a sec, I would like to do that regardless. I mean, I don't know if it's just the fly, but I I would I would do that. Yeah, I, I genuinely was like, all right. I, I left. I came back, and it was just like sitting on my couch, chilling, smoking a J. Wow. I was just like, what is up with this fly? Hold on, I want to revisit this because you answered very quickly. No, you actually have to physically get a pony into your house, get into a suit of armor, and and carry a lance across your room. Where did got, this come from? I just thought of, I just thought of you battling a fly. I, I love it. First of all, it sounds like the guy who came up with the found pizza idea is like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Well, okay, my only, so I, I would love to somehow figure out, uh, how to get a horse in my apartment because getting the couch in was hard enough. So I would only imagine what it would be like to get a mini horse. I'm assuming this mini horse is like a little Sebastian from Parks and Rec. So I'm already loving this idea. Um, and I was like, yeah. And I will say though, the only thing that, that gave me pause was the, uh, armor because after Halloween, I realize I'm getting to the point I'm a little too big for certain costumes, so I feel like I'd feel really bad, like just sitting there trying to get like like, like an old like an old knight just trying to go one more time, like putting all the armor back on and being like, "Well, once more until the breach, dear once friend." More. And then and then I I started like I also felt like at some point it was like an, an Ender's Game situation where I was like, "Oh shit, maybe we're now becoming like we're frenemies." You know what I mean? Like now we've actually gone through this shared traumatic experience of trying to get out of my apartment. And now m maybe I don't want to fight him. Maybe I want him on my team. Maybe I want to fight. Maybe I want to put that armor on and that lance so I can go out there and make sure that this fly is never bothered by anyone like me. Wow. You, my kind. You've become Sancho Panza. I know. I don't know if every Jew is Sancho Panza. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's from Don Quixote. I know a guy who bought a lived in a basement apartment, and he bought a gecko and just let it into his apartment to feed on centipedes, mice, mosquitoes, whatever. And he was like, "I never see the gecko, but I, there's never insects here." That's like crazy. I I would love. Yeah, well, I, I, you know who it is. He, it's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It definitely it makes a lot of sense when you know who. Right. It, when you're like, oh right, like I almost thought that like maybe would have. Like, I guess just, what if that fly was there so long that I guess it just became my pet? It's like, oh, yeah, that was my thing. Like, I don't have a dog or a cat. But it's like, oh, yeah, Jared. Like, oh, he's got a pet fly. Yeah. And then they, and then you look at me and you're like, all right, I buy it. Which is exactly when I heard about the person like, yeah, they definitely have a gecko. Yeah. And probably Geico. Could be. Could be. I don't know if he has a German. 
Okay. He's got a pet fly, everyone. Give it up for Jared Wilder. Yeah, for Jared Wilder. What's your, how do people find you? Jared is a comedian, stand up, and yeah, uh, bon vivant. Yeah, uh, you can find me on uh, on on social media and and getting a haircut. Oh, that was Jared, so nice. Jared Wilder. Right, that, that was so great because I was just sort of like, oh yeah, you can find me. And you were like genuinely serious. First yes. of all, I'm so glad that you're here, and the fact that you had the type of day that you had. Makes me feel like, all right, going forward, if I could get to have my first Pop Tart experience, in a way, the analogy of it, I'd really like to. And I felt like you guys gave that to me. So, yes, at something wilder. Something, oh. something wilder. At oh, something gee. wilder. A little something, something. A little something, something. Thank you, guys. Yeah, all right. At something wilder. Give it up for Jared, everybody. Yeah, we're going to go to All Night Skate afterwards. Are you going to hang out for a little while afterwards? All right, good. Yay. Okay. What do we? What's next? Um, I don't know. You got something? I got. Something. I do have something. Okay. okay. So, I already told you about the found pizza idea, but that's now I'm here to tell you that's actually the first draft of another idea. <laughs> first found pizza was the idea that led me to this idea, which I actually think is maybe better. So it's a pizza place that it's called Santa Claus Pizza. All right. And year round or seasonal? Year round. Wow. And the cashiers are dressed as elves, and then it's delivered by somebody who's dressed as Santa Claus. Okay. Is there a theme to the pizza? No. It's just good. I don't know how you I don't feel. think people would order from Santa Claus Pizza? I feel like. The combination of colors of elves, and I would, I would be some some part of me would expect to taste mint on my pizza. Mm, no. All right, maybe found pizza is better. All right. I, Here's here how it would work. Okay. If they only delivered um chocolate chip pizzas, you know those big chocolate chip cookies that are pizzas. Mm. That's how it would work because Santa. Eats cookies? Eats cookies. Uh, Santa eats cookies. I, yes, Anya. It would work if the delivery men had to have a reindeer name. A reindeer name? Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm fine with that. That's fine. Wow. I thought it was a good idea because people love Santa Claus in Christmas and, like, kids who want pizza would be like, let's order from Santa Claus Pizza. I th- I think right. it would I think for children it would be this guy's got something. Yes. Yeah, question. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe it would ruin things a little bit. Yeah. What if okay, what if every other time except for the holidays Santa wears a Hawaiian shirt? Yeah. All right. I now I'm on board. That's who Yeah. This is what Santa Claus is doing when he's not this is what delivering he's, toys. Yeah. Yeah, I I like that. It makes it accessible. Santa's like, I'm always here. Yeah. You could write me anytime. If I had the means, I would bo- open both of these things to see which one worked better. Uh, yeah, see, oh. this is – all right. This is why I knew it was a good idea because it's like once you come up with a theme that's so good as like Santa Claus pizza, like the ideas are like – Just start rolling. Yeah, like. yeah. I feel uh, like you can – Yeah. You can get your breadsticks in a stocking. That's how they come. Wow. The breadsticks come in a stocking. Wow. <laughs> I, what would be the Mrs. Claus special? Mm. Oh, Grandma Pizza. Uh, wow. Yeah, Grandma Pizza. It writes Pizza. itself. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. I'm in. All right. We let's go to to our next guest. All right. Cool. All right. Our friend Ellie is a street photographer. Do you call yourself a New York photographer, street photographer like Yeah. All right. Come She's, tell us all about yeah, it. Yeah. Give it up for Ellie, everybody. She's Woo! a photographer. And I met her in a, at an event, and she's come to this show several times, and she takes photos of this show and other things. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll give you a hand to sit in this center Yeah, yeah. yeah. Come on. Metologist this afternoon. They can avoid it at 1130. You leave at 5 o'clock. And if you come at 1230, you leave at 5 o'clock. 
Yeah. You leave at one o'clock. You leave at five o'clock. Can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll hold it just because it'll. Okay. Yeah. If well, we well, hand it back to it and forth. No. Oh. Uh, Whoa. Prepared. I'm very well prepared. You just can't smoke a cigarette and do this thing at the same time. Yeah, yeah. All right. Good, good, good. good. Tell us about photography. How, are you, have you been a lifelong photographer or is it a newer endeavor for you? Well, it's very strange because as, as, as a kid, I used to take these mental snapshots of things and they never left, like down to the detail, the shoes, the hair, the smell, the arguments, everything that happened. I could look at a ta- I could look at a photograph. And I could see everybody posing on Hanukkah, because Hanukkah's coming now. Everybody had their own menorah. And I remember the screaming, the yelling. And there's a snapshot that I take. And I try to stay away, far away from those places as possible. But taking a photograph as a writer, I used to write things down. I can't write anymore. I have like, you know, I had a little concussion and it hasn't kind of like left. So I found that photography kind of like takes over. A photograph is a story. And New York, we live in New York. I was a shrink in this city. I think I went a little crazy. It's very, the things that I've seen, the things that I actually had to write, I wished that I had a camera, but I had a pen. Not being able to write now, a photograph does tell a story. And a photograph also can give inspiration to someone. So if you've been in a helping profession and you really enjoyed doing what you did, to be able to see somebody, like this morning I got thank you, this morning I got damn. There are kids that are on the street that doing these street photography, it's a dance with your environment. I see all these people running around with these uh, cameras with all this fancy equipment, running around, doing these poses, dashing. I'm walking with a clown, okay? Good friend of mine, very nice man, wonderful clown. I forget that he's a clown, but I'm walking with him. And uh, we're walking down Coney Island, he's doing juggling, I'm taking pictures of him, we're having conversations. So later on we went out, we walked down, you know, Coney Island is like... Um, you know Nems, the rapper? Ralph knows it. Nems? The, uh, oh, Nems. Yep. Nems describes Cody Island. When you grow up in Cody Island, you grow up inside of, like, a Brooklyn. You know the people in your neighborhood. So when the people come in the summertime, it's like, welcome to Cody Island. You got the beach. You got the rides. But if you step over on surf, you know, you cross over to other people's territory, all oh, they have ran loose. Yeah. It was a wild neighborhood over there. You know, I spent years. I worked at a hospital over there. All the people... I know a kid, so when you walk in there, and I know all these people, I like to make their photographs. I like to give them their photographs. I like to see that I've seen them grown up. And in some way, when they look at something, like, uh, they say, wow, you took a picture of me, and I feel like people will be coming to my funeral. Like I, I made him looking up at the, at the fireworks in the sky, and it's kind of like, You know, when people die, you have all these paintings all over their friends that you grow up with. People are getting shot. We got so much gun violence over there. People are really scared to go inside over there. And now I'm white. I have a very big problem because, you know, what? if you don't know me, all I am is a Karen. I took a picture the other day. (laughs) No, I'm telling you, I'm in danger. I tell you, on June 3rd last year, you know why? Because I got, you know, when you're on the street, you know what goes on in the street. So June 3rd, there was all these things going on that, oh, King's Plaza is going to be robbed and I knew where people were. So I figured, all right, I'm going to go this way. I'm going to go that way. Are there bricks lying around? There's cars from Texas flying everywhere. People aren't paying attention. I have ADD and a head injury. I see everything all at once. The only way to stop it is to stop and to look and to also photograph it. The photographs I got during the pandemic, during that day, the people, homeless people, you know, where are the social workers? They're all dig bats. All they're doing is taking these papers and asking you, oh, you have no nutrition. You're obese. Let's go through the four fucking food groups. No, 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 no. You're going to go through the four food groups. But the thing is that there are people who are just normal, who are just leaving the Lower East Side, an old man and an old woman with six suitcases. Later, I saw them in Times Square because I go in and check out what's going on. I didn't believe the news. I don't believe them. I think they're lying. I was out there last year. The whole goddamn Times Square was filled. Everybody was bumping and bumping, eating in bubbles. It's amazing what goes on. I want to go out and I want to find out for myself. What was your day to, during the pandemic? What did you, on a typical day, what would you do? Well, first I would 
try to get up and stay to get to the bathroom because I wake up and I can't feel the lower part of my body. Mm. And that's a story to itself, you know. So you get there, then you sit down, then you take a thyroid pill, then you lie down, then you eat, <laughs> and then you're exhausted, then you go, all right, do I have to take a shower again? Oh, my God. This yes. is, you know, neuromuscular disease, it's a disability. It's an invisible disability. As you see, I probably, like, I can't stop moving, but I really can't stop moving. They can give me drugs to stop moving, but then it makes you move even more. You know, that's from working, I would say, in 1988, I started. So I stopped working in the mental health field, getting to do intakes, getting to know the people of my city, getting to understand why the people from Borough Park were coming to Coney Island to get their AIDS tests. And they want to go to my modernist hospital, they have to come somewhere else. So you have a privilege of being able to work with all different kinds of people, understanding who they are, and to... Maybe educate another person to be a little bit more empathic. Photographs throughout time have always told stories. Okay, don't don't lose me. We're, we're still 2020. Wake up in the morning. You do okay, medicine. It's, it's okay. I, I'm here for you. And then I, it takes me a long time to arrange what I was going to do. Usually I take a screenshot. I don't remember shit. I don't remember anything. You know, I remember everything from the past, but from day to day, it's very difficult. So I've taken screenshots of things that I think are interesting, screenshots of people who I do want to see, try to work it in with the homeless person that I got to go visit and maybe I can bring him something to eat or get him some shoes. You know, go stand on the food line with this really cool Russian lady. Yeah, her husband was a mobster. Very, very, very nice. You know, and being over there watching the people and seeing really what the... Where is there? The well, you, the you do get around. I mean, I've yeah. run into you at uh, oh, many events. Wow. And your photos are beautiful, but I also say this: you there's know, times, there. there's t- no, I know. Oh. Well, even when I know you're at an event, and you, I'm surprised that you send me pictures of me, because even though I know you're there, I forget that you're there taking photos. That's, That's how good. Thing, yeah. You see. I went to, after I was a social worker and a clinical social worker, and also I had a very crazy childhood, and I understood that my parents were crazy. There was nothing you could do about it. You can't get out of a place that you're in, and they are insane. Photographs of my family, I, I couldn't even touch a camera. I was so nauseated by it. But the thing is, is that every time somebody passed by, I wasn't focusing on them. I was taking a snapshot of oh, well, look how that nice that their father is with that child. Or I can tell that these people are going to be divorced very shortly. <laughs> you know, using, being, being able to be astute to body language. Also, you need to know that when you work on the street, when you make home visits all over the whole Brooklyn and go to all these different places that you are, there are these beautiful human beings who live in such strange places. Now, everywhere I go, I just... I have a helmet in the back of my car for construction together with a little thing over there. I got little tags. I walk in wherever I want. If I was born... Oh, that's a good... Yeah. Terrible. I used to do this when I was a child. I think when I got hit in the head, I regressed back to when I was like 14 years old. I think that's the problem. My shrink... <laughs> my, my shrink knows. I've had a 17 years. You know, so I, I, I'm pretty much okay other than I have a head injury and I can't, you know... So my day... I screen shoot something. I know what I want to see. I know something is happening. When the wide awakes are going to be over there, I want to see what the wide awakes are going to be like. What are they going to say? I go to the sex workers meeting. I used to direct an AIDS unit. So there I am taking pictures. I don't publish anything. And I get very angry when people do. And I have to alert the people that I know because I know all these wonderful people in the city. How dare you take a picture of somebody without their permission and let them know, sex workers unite. You're putting them in danger. You know? But if you do go over there, like the other night, I was talking to somebody, and I know the head of the gay trans movement. I always send them pictures, too. They like them. Yeah, yeah. But I don't post any pictures. I don't really give a shit. I just want to have them see how dignified they are. This woman, I can't still sit here. Yeah. This woman <laughs> is amazing. There were like 400 cops, cars going all the way down in Washington Square Park. There was all this Black Lives Matter movement of this... And I have to go see what's going on. The television is telling me something. I know some of the people who are there. I want to go and I want to see to have a camera and I have to take pictures and I, yeah. you know, like I just want to see. I don't want to be with other photographers. I want to know for myself. So I do take these photographs. Last night, they, it was National Trans Remembrance Day. So they were going to release balloons. I also love balloons. <laughs> you know, who doesn't love balloons? You know? I mean, I don't like them now. They're a big pain in the ass. But when you're a kid, Ralph, and you read, and you read Curious George, 
How many of them could I have to fly the fuck out of my house? You know, like, you know, you want to dream of Pippi Longstockings, and right now I actually feel a little bit like a Pippi Longstockings. And I meet these wonderful people along the way, and New York has a rhythm of its own. Yes. You feel it. I was born here. I was raised here. Nobody supervised me when I was little. I had a bicycle. I could go wherever I wanted. I didn't have a camera, but I had a, a notebook. And I had a pen. Yeah. And I used to peek into my neighbor's house, check out what they were doing, see about the cats, look at the garbage. Now, you know, like, like I just walked outside right here. There was a huge friggin' rat. And then there's a woman that looks exactly like the biscuit painted over there by Samo Samo. I know all those people. I have all their photographs. Yeah, yeah. I send it to them. And they like it. And it makes me happy. You know? Yeah. It's a little therapeutic for me, and it's a little therapeutic for somebody to see what they look like in a candid moment when they're fucking gorgeous. How do people yeah. find your photos? How do they find What's them? your Instagram handle oh, again? I don't want to tell anybody. You, uh, yeah, I'll tell you afterwards. Good. Ask. Talk to her afterwards. They're very beautiful yeah. photos. Yeah. Uh, you've taken lots of great ones of, of events we've done, and they're the best. We're, so, yeah. we're always so happy when you show up. And I, I really feel very happy watching you. It's... It's beautiful. It's beautiful to see people feeling comfortable, relaxed, laughing. We don't have enough of that. Everybody's very, very serious. Don't jinx it. <laughs> no, it's not jinx it. There's a wonderful energy. There's a wonderful energy of people, and I think that you need it. In a day where everybody's got their head inside of this telephone, I have a whole series on people sitting together with their families out to eat. Every fucking person's on the phone. Everybody's texting, everybody's busy, they're not looking at each other, they're eating and they're staring at the phone. I probably have like a hundred or two hundred of them, you know, and as I'm walking the whole day, everything is interesting to me. That's why I fall a lot. I just fell the day before. <laughs> I just fell the day before Halloween. You know what the Halloween parade was going to be like in New York? I fell right into a hole in Washington Square Park because the shadows, okay, were casting and it looked like a ghost. So I got the camera. They did, they had construction. I anticipated it, you know, like being smooth. And I went, boom! And I had Doc Martens on. Those Doc Martens that they make now with the new high heels are completely ridiculous. You can't, they, they, they're like walking with bricks attached to your feet. So I missed the parade, but I hung out in Christopher Street. Now, Christopher Street is a wonderful place to be. You want to know New York? You want to see a city? The most beautiful people I meet, everybody really is not just genuine love, but they're beautiful, and they're having a wonderful time. And you could see the policemen, and I listen to the policemen, what they say. I listen to the people talking at the policemen. I photograph the graffiti. Yeah. There is a s different smell to every single neighborhood. I don't shut up. You could stop me at any time. <laughs> That's another thing. You know, sometimes, like, you ever see little children with ADHD, you know, or, or something which is like a learning disability. There's something which is called pervasive developmental disorder. Everybody fucking now has a disease. They gotta give you a disease. The pharmaceutical companies need a lot of money. You know? They gotta, you know, give you something. Yeah. What was I talking about? Uh, I think you're gonna talk, give people your Instagram handle after the show. Yeah, I think the that's. Show. After yeah. the show. The show. Give it up for Ellie, everybody. Thank you, yeah, don't nope. fall on the way yeah, off yeah. the stage. Be careful. Okay. Yeah. I can be careful. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, All right. All right. Yeah, make sure you ask Ellie about her, her Instagram. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's talk about Thanksgiving plans and we'll have our final guests. Okay. Does anybody have Thanksgiving plans they want to brag about? Anything that they're excited for? Dishes that they're. I love anything with gravy on it. I'm just, that's what I'm looking forward to. I like gravy. I like stuffing. I like cranberry sauce. That's yeah. to me the, the cornerstone, the staple. I also grew up with a lot of baked macaroni. Oh, mmm. Um, huh? Yeah, but I mean, I'm Haitian. We did a very specific thing. Yeah. It had ham in it. Oh. Yeah, there's, there's a lot going on there. In, in the oven? In the oven. On top? Yeah. In the oven. Also, holidays for me were a lot about pumpkin soup. Mm. We do pumpkin soup and it's got a big, it's got a big fucking piece of beef in there and chicken yeah. and dumplings and potatoes and carrots and cabbage and. Wow. I don't like soup. That's the only soup I'll eat. Mm. Pumpkin soup. You can eat it all the time. Cold, hot. It's all good. You know what I'm talking, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. All right. Oh. Did that inspire any Thanksgiving things? Memories? Thoughts? Dreams? Yeah. It's, in, in Creole, it's called soup jumu. Mm. 
<laughs> oh, yeah. I had something that I wanted to share that relates to photographs. I found three rolls of undeveloped film, and I there's a film developing place on the third floor of this building, and I dropped them off today. today and I'm going to pick them up next week, and I'll we'll be able to look at them. Next wow, week that's the exciting! Show. Tune in no next clue. week. I have no clue what's on them. Wow, I'm excited. No clue, yeah. 35 millimeter. These rolls of film are like over 10 years old. Okay, here we go. One minute. Could you do one minute on the clock? Yes. I'm going to come up with 10 ideas of what's on that film. All right. Okay. Um, all right. Keep you, track yeah, whenever, tell me when to go. Okay, uh, pictures of you just put on BT and you're just taking pictures of you watching BT. Um, pictures of your pictures of the inside of your hand and you're trying to read your own palm. Um, pictures of your own hand and you made a you made a puppet and you're and you're, and you're doing pictures of the puppet. Uh, pictures of uh, pictures of just you put your camera inside your jacket and just take pictures. Pictures of um, you, you just walk around like this and you take pictures behind you. Um, upside down. Uh, pictures of you lying upside down on your bed. Uh, selfies. Pictures of you lying upside down but it's your closet. Um, pictures of you uh, just pointing the camera straight up in the air. Pictures of you going to the highest building you can find and then just taking a picture of yourself so nobody can see that you're on the top of a building um uh, uh it's a picture of uh you, you trying to write your own name in different ways and then you take pictures of it uh pictures uh that you take with your non-dominant hand um pic- oh, okay that's 11 11 yeah all right but let's get a grade all right Yay, you finally all right. triumph we Thank finally you. did something you liked huh Eight, Eight out, of, out of eleven. That's not bad. That's good. That's not bad. Um, while you were doing that, I realized that it's probably road trip photo- photos or party photos. No. That's the only thing I would take my camera for. Got it. Usually, but I, I'm, I could be wrong. All right. I should have been more practical. No, it's all right. You might have hit on. Some, maybe there's pictures of my hand on there. I don't know. Okay, good. Um, okay, should we do our? Last guest? Yeah, let's do our last guest. Yeah. Uh, one tell of my. Us, uh, tell us about this guy. Uh, just one of my favorite comedians in the city. Uh, funny, funny dude. Yeah. Let's get Rob Cantrell up here. Yeah. Uh, and Mosh is going to join us as, as well. Um, does, does your son like your comedy? Is your son encouraging to you? Or you, you said you have a kid. Yeah. Uh, I have a daughter. Yeah. Is she into you? Yeah. She's ten. Yeah, she she's down. Okay. Yeah, she's like, she's uh she hasn't been to a show, but uh yeah, I don't talk about my kid that much. Yeah, yeah. I try to I don't put my kid on Instagram, I don't do any of that shit. Right. I try to keep it kinda low. I like goofball style. But yeah, my kid's cool. Good. That's good. That's the, fun. She's the, fun, she's cool, she's nice. Oh man. Can you run Found pizza and Santa Claus pizza by her, and let us know which she what she is says. Better. Yeah, I will. I, she, my, she, yeah, she would dig Santa Claus pizza. Yeah. Everybody, yeah. everybody likes Santa Claus and pizza. Um, I want to say this. So you really are. I think I've told you this, and you probably don't remember. Every time I see you, I tell you you're one of my favorite comics in the city. I know. I know. I know. I've seen you like I say it every time, and you're like, I don't know you, and I'm like, I love you. But the other, the thing I found out, the reason I asked you to be on the show today is, what's your birthday? November 19th, 1972. Nice. Anya, what is my birthday? November 19th. Oh! Birthday friends. Or birthday friends, yeah. Like that is, we got the same type of energy. We got, we got, the, the, yes. we got the same, we got glasses. I was so, I never. I got the same shorts. Oh, there I, it is. Maybe, astro, uh, maybe a, there's something to astrology. Maybe it's real. I think it's very real. I fuck with astrology. But not, yeah, I, I like uh, Rob Breezy. You know him? Weekly. SF Weekly. I started comedy in San Francisco, and that's, I read him. I dig his shit. So uh, he does astrology. Does, yeah, really good astrology. He was on the Village Voice. That was hit the main dude. Uh, I do know Nims the rapper. Uh, do you know Joey Gay? 
He's a Brooklyn comedian that this, and he brought him up to me just yesterday. It's weird that you brought him up because I'm writing a pilot about a hip hop dude that lives in Coney Island. He was like, do you know Nims? I was like, I, you know, I'm from DC. I don't know Brooklyn. I mean, I've lived here for a minute, but I know you. I know the vibe. It's the same vibe. I know dudes from Garrison Beach. I know all you crazy motherfuckers, but, uh, but they're very creative, cool. Nims, I hear is amazing. Yeah. See the guy who curses people out on Instagram? Wait, wait, you see, the thing is that I'd be worried about you, you know, I'm an old lady. I, I, I understand a lot of things that you, you know, the other day, you just came home, and you know, I see you, see you, I ask you, like, what the fuck is this, like, personal? That's why you're cool. You know, I can't, and I also block out, like, plates. I won't take you to smoke and they don't look less they know that I took the picture and I sent it, and then we got permission to use it. I'm a, I'm with you. Yeah, you gotta watch about your security on the internet. It's all creeps. That's what I tell my daughter. You don't have to worry about people on the street anymore. You worry about people on the internet. The street is empty. It's the internet that's fucking scary. <laughs> oh yeah. There's creeps out there. But it well, is beautiful life. we're having fun here. Yeah, we're having <laughs> okay. fun here. Yeah, it's a beautiful life, though. I think the pandemic as a, as, don't you guys get a greater appreciation of life? Like, isn't that where we're all going towards? Like, is anybody waking up to the fact like this is amazing? That's what that whole, st- you know, that's yeah. it's fucking like we should be. And it's not forever. Don't ever think it's forever. You know, your ego is going to die like the spirit. will. I don't know what I don't know. I don't know. Right. And I think not knowing is the most powerful, and that's the dance, is to look at the unknown and appreciate the unknown. And, uh, yeah, that's what I think the pandemic taught me. I mean, give it up for Rob Cantrell, everybody, right? That, that's a good... That's, that's a, a good, good place to end. We're going to... Yeah. Uh, I, I got a new, I got a, uh, a new uh, hip-hop album coming out called Caffeinated Dope Rhymes. And I have a song called Coffee and Weed uh, that's on that. So check that out. And then I have a uh, podcast called The Cannabis Coffee Hour. Nice. Oh, tell people you're at or your Instagram. Uh, Rob88 Cantrell is my Instagram. It has links. My website is Rob Cantrell. I have live shows. I'm doing Littlefield uh, in Brooklyn on February 24th. And their special guest... Uh, I can't announce them, but it's going to be heavy. Nice. All right. Get up for Rob, Give everybody. It up for Rob, everybody. Thanks for being here. And this is Turner Morning Show. We're going to go to All Night Skate down the street. If anyone wants to hang out, we're going to go to All Night Skate. Thanks for Dream tr- Thanks to Dream Treats. Grab and those last two Dream here. Treats for you, Jared Joe. and Ellie and Rob and Anya and Masha and Ralph and me. All right. We love you. See love you, you next week. Good night. Thank you. Have a happy next uh, Turkey Day. Have a good Turkey Day. Have a good Turkey Day.